This is Algebra 2 Lesson 1.3. We've been talking about sequences for a couple lessons. We introduced arithmetic sequences, which means you're adding repeatedly. Geometric sequences, which mean you get a list of numbers by multiplying. A shifted geometric sequence is a list of numbers generated with multiplication, because it is geometric, but also addition, because it's a shifted sequence. So it's still geometric, but we shift it by doing an addition or a subtraction, so we do both. The recursive formula would look like what we've seen. To get the next term, we take the one before it. We're going to multiply by a ratio and add a common difference. Um, I want to point out too that these are transposable. Like I can put the ratio first and then the un minus 1 after that. That's totally fine. Um, their long run value would be like eventually if we continue this process the uh, sequence would level out. There's a formula to find the long run value and to do that, you would take the common difference divided by 1 minus the ratio. A couple things to note is if your sequence levels out, um, no, we'll just leave it at that. Okay, so that's our formula for the long run value. Let's do some examples and we'll see both of these in action. So we are going to go to a doctor and the doctor will prescribe us 16 milliliters of medicine each day, but my kidneys will filter 25% of the medicine for my blood each day. So I'm going to do my side calculation for the ratio, the same as the geometric sequences. I am removing, filtering out 25%. That's a percent decrease situation. So if I have 100% and I take away 25%, my body retains 75% of the medicine in my bloodstream every day. My formula needs two pieces of information, where I start and how I change. So I'm starting with 16 milliliters in my bloodstream. I am retaining 75% after my kidneys filter out the 25%, but I'm also going to take an additional 16 milliliter dose to replace that filtering. So this is my shifted geometric formula. I have my ratio and my difference at the same time. I'm going to key this in the calculator just to kind of see what happens. So we're starting with 16 milliliters of medicine. Day goes by and 75% remains after 25% is filtered out. So I'm going to replace that with another 16 milliliter dose. So after the first day then I have 28 milliliters in my bloodstream. And the second day there's 37 and then 44. 49, 53, we can see that it's increasing every day, but the amount that it increases by decreases gradually. And if I kind of kept going, and I'm just going to do a bunch of these, this is what a long run value is. You can see that eventually the value is going to level off and it's going to stop changing. That's a long run value. And I can tell right now that it's going to level off at 64 as soon as this rounds, but I'm just going to keep going. And there we see that it leveled off at 64 milliliters in the bloodstream. So on my packet here, I'm going to do a rough sketch of the situation. It doesn't need to be super accurate, but I know that I started with 16 milliliters in my bloodstream and it increased kind of quickly at first, but then it leveled off eventually when I got to 64 milliliters. So I already know the long run value is 64. I use my calculator kind of the long way to figure that out but I am going to use the formula that I gave right here to get the same answer. So to get the long run value, we would take the starting number, divide it by 1 minus the ratio, and make sure we're using the ratio that we're actually multiplying by, not the percentage that we were given. But if I do this, 16 divided by 1 minus 0.75, I get the same long run value that I found, 64, by just hitting enter a whole bunch of times. Okay, I have one more example. 
Antonia and Deanna are working at the community pool for the summer. They provide a shock treatment of 450 grams of dry chlorine to prevent the growth of algae in the pool. Then they add 45 grams of chlorine each day after the initial treatment because the sun burns off 15% of the chlorine each day. So it evaporates. So we're going to write a formula to model the situation. I'm going to do my side calculation for R first. If I have 100% and I'm removing 15% because of evaporation, that means 85% remains in the pool each day. So my starting value, I start with 450 grams and 85% of that remains in the pool each day and I'm going to add 45 more grams for maintenance every day. I want to find the amount of chlorine after one, two, and three days. So on my calculator, I have my starting value. I am multiplying by 0.85. That's my 85% retained after 15% decreases. And I'm going to replace that with 45 grams each day. So after one day, two days, and three days, I have these three values. I'm going to round them to the nearest whole number, but 428, 408, and 392. So that is U1, U2, and U3. Sketch a graph and find the long run. So I can tell that it's decreasing. That first shock treatment they provide kills off all the algae, but it's not really safe to swim in yet. So it's going to start decreasing, and it's going to eventually level off at a level that's going to keep stuff from growing in the pool, but be safe to swim in. So I want to find that long run value. You have options if you like just push it on your calculator a whole bunch. You could just keep going until that value levels off. I'm going to utilize the formula that I wrote above. That is the common difference divided by 1 minus the ratio. And again, it's the ratio that retains, not the ratio that we eliminate. So 45 divided by 1 minus 0.85. That value will keep decreasing until it reaches 300, and then it'll stay right there. So um, I'll add my long run value on my graph. Not really drawn to scale, but that's all that it needs to show. That is it for the notes for this lesson. You should be able to go on to the exercises. Please let me know if you have any questions.